Okay, it's being recorded, so I'm going to leave the meeting now. Just kidding. <laughs>
Yeah, I believe it's nine o'clock. Do others have nine a.m. at the moment? Yes. Yes. Okay. So as it's nine a.m., I would like to call the June twenty fourth meeting of the Waterways Advisory Committee to order. Um, can we have the uh, roll call, please? You did. <laughs> Let the record reflect that all committee members are present with the exception of committee member Adam Sharon. Okay. Um, are there other state, any statements by committee members prior to uh, continuing on the agenda? Would this be um, the time to let the committee know that I need to recuse myself from the um, the main agenda item, the uh, Stony Point Flats agenda item. We can actually wait until that agenda item comes up. Okay. A few other items before that. Okay. So. Um, okay. So uh, you've done the roll call, Michelle. Or okay. Why don't we proceed? Um, Amy, did you want to make a comment at this point? Yes, Michelle, would it be possible to put up the PowerPoint slide? Um, so we do just want to note that um, we are in, at Santa Rosa here committed to a safe and inclusive environment. And so we want to make sure that everyone um, acts accordingly and um, that staff will be ready to remove people if there are any issues um, or disrespect. Um, and we will end the meeting if necessary. Um, just wanted to let everyone know that. So we do expect this meeting to be um, held in accordance to this, this statement here. Thank, Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to just uh, let the public know, and by the way, I do welcome uh, members of the public. Um, we're always uh, pleased to hear what people have to say. Um, I do want to say, though, that the role of the Waterways Committee is pretty much as the title of our committee would indicate. Um, we review projects only when they are adjoining creeks, and we look at the interface between the, the project site and the creek uh, environment. And we don't really deal with uh, gen more general land use issues on developments. Uh, even if they adjoin the creek, we, we look uh, at the creek interface. Um, with that, um, I'd like to move on to the advisory committee reports. I don't have one of my own. Are there any reports anyone has from the committee? Okay, hearing none, um, we can now start with public comment on items that um, are non-agenda items, item four. This is the time when any person may address the subcommittee on members not listed on the agenda, but which were, are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Waterways Advisory Committee. If you wish to make a public comment, please raise your hand now. And for our call-in participants, um, please select star nine to raise your hand and then star six to unmute. And I am not seeing any hands. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next item is item five, the department report. Are there any reports for the committee by the department, uh, water department or Sonoma water today? Thank you, Chair. I'll just start, I have just one item. And that is that we are anticipating moving into a hybrid meeting format, uh, most likely this fall. And that's really being driven by the executive order by the governor's office. And so we have heard that the executive order that suspends some of the Brown Act rules in light of the pandemic, that will um, be rescinded in September. So um, we'll be providing more information about how we plan to proceed, but there is direction right now to continue in a hybrid format. So we will allow um, the public to attend and view by Zoom or other method, and then um, also have people available to come or have a place available for the public to attend as well. 
So we'll be providing some more information on that in the coming months as we get closer. And uh, that's the only report I have um, from my department at this time. I have a question on that. Mm -hmm. um, does that apply to the committee members also that we can either Zoom or be in person? I'm not sure at this point. So we'll, we'll get into that issue too. Okay. Hey, thank you. Um, I don't hear any other reports um, at the hey, moment. Brady's here. He might have a report. Oh, welcome. <laughs> All right. Good morning, morning, Chair, members of the committee. And I'm happy to report our Lower Colgan Creek Restoration Phase 2 pro project is underway. So we were able to get in the creek on June, June 15th and do our uh, aquatic species relocation. And this year, one plus from the drought is there actually was not a lot of water and not a lot of uh, uh, pooled water to remove the, the fish and crayfish from. So things got underway pretty quick, quickly and our contractor is uh, fast at work and uh, the channel is already uh, completely cleared of all the vegetation and things are, like I said, moving well. And again, this is about a 2200 foot uh, section of Colgan Creek downstream of uh, Victoria Drive. And it's a complete channel reconstruction with a restoration in stream habitat features, plantings and a paved pathway. So uh, things are going well. And uh, it's kind of for, for me, I think it's been years of work to get to this point with the planning, the permitting and the grants and the funding. So it's kind of the easy part for me now to watch the contractor and our engineers, uh, you know, get this thing built. Congratulations, Steve. It's been a long time. When did this project start, by the way? In terms well, of really, the Golden Creek restoration, and, and it is a three-phase project. It was initially approved by the council in 2002. And then uh, we were busy underway with the different phases of the Prince Green, Greenway in the mid-2000s. And then uh, we constructed phase one near Elsie Allen in 2014. And then more recently, we've had issues with the fires and the COVID pandemic. So we've been delayed a couple of years. So it was, it was actually out to bid last year. And then the city canceled all construction pro projects that weren't are already awarded last year. Well, congratulations. Great work to you and all the staff that have been involved. This is all right. Thank, thank you. And I think Alistair has a report on our Creek Stewardship Program. Thank Can you. I ask a question of Steve before we move to Alistair? Of course. Um, um, we just looked at a project um, on the other side of Colgan Creek that borders of the East Southern Canine Companions. Um, and they're going to be looking, they're, they're going to be doing, you know, fairly large development there for their facility. And we asked them if they'd be interacting with you guys um, concerning that. First, have they interacted with you? And second, do you see any potential issues? I don't think I don't think it's been fully approved yet. Yeah, I have not been contacted by them, but basically their facility is uh, fenced off from the from the creek to keep a separation there. So I think probably the interaction there may be some plantings they could have along their side of the fence that are more sort of creek. Uh, applicable plantings. So, and our project will be uh, completely separate from them. Like we don't need any property from them or anything like that to construct our project. No, I understand. Okay, thank you. Welcome, Alistair. Uh, hello, you know, one thing I think is interesting is that even though there wasn't much water in that stretch of Colden Creek that Steve and his crew, they removed over 5,000 fish from that area and, and transported them to other pools that would hopefully hold water through the summer. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of life in our, our creeks that we don't see. Um, and the creeks, um, I think they're doing okay this summer, except there's there's very little water in them. I think we're gonna see the lowest levels that, that any of us have ever seen in them. Uh, in the meantime, we do have a, a youth corps crew that is hired by the uh, Sonoma County, uh, by Sonoma Water. It's a summer youth corps crew, but basically our stormwater and creek staff is uh, directing them on projects that are uh, vegetation management, trail uh, 
clearing. Of course, there's always uh, trash to pick up, but we, we have eight weeks of their work there into week two. Uh, they'll be hitting all around the, the, the city, getting different places. We also started our, uh, our summer youth outreach uh, through Boys and Girls Club, the neighborhood revitalization uh, uh, summer day camps, or not the day camps, but their 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 summer camps, not the the big camps in the parks, and um, also with some schools that are, that run summer programs. So that those got under week this underway this week. Um, we're still not uh, hosting or sponsoring volunteer events, uh, but we do support different groups that come come out and uh, organize themselves and then we'll be out there for a safety briefing for to work with them to haul off the trash and uh, uh, the, just yesterday was contacted by the Sonoma County Bicycle <clears throat> Coalition um, and they're interested in, in seeing what they can do to help keep the, the trails clean. You might have seen a letter to the editor commenting on what they said is a sorry state down at Prince Memorial Greenway and you know, that always kind of hurts me because we put in a lot of time down there and a lot of effort, but it is still not as welcoming to the public uh, as, as I'd like to see it. But, you know, we'll be down there tomorrow with a, a cleanup crew and uh, we were down there earlier this week, just all the time, but it, it needs so much more attention than we're able to give it right now. Um, and neighbors all around the city have vegetation concerns about you know weed abatement and uh, all the vegetation in the creek and that, that's kind of a tricky thing because you know the the vegetation in the creek is habitat it does uh, keep the creek water cool and fresher and, and higher quality but there's always a great fear of, of fire in fact you know the fire department is putting out little spot fires just about every day that are in vacant lots up against abandoned buildings along creeks. Uh, you know, I don't know if some of them might be intentionally set, uh, but uh, otherwise, you know, just a, a, a little cooking fire gets out of control or somebody smoking something. Uh, and um, we're, we're getting also reports through a My Santa Rosa reporting system that, that's really helpful. Um, and a lot of the reports kind of come on are about chronic areas such as there's a huge camp in Pomo Creek at Northwest right in the middle of Northwest Community Park that the city has not been able to resolve the stuff along the Prince Greenway. You know the Greenway has much fewer camps now but a lot of those people have just spread out downstream along uh, downstream of Pearson Street towards Stony Point Road where there is thick concealing vegetation and they're able to get down to the water very hard to see even from the trail right above. Um, so we have still big problems with uh, people congregating and, and living in our creeks. The um, one other thing I was thinking of, oh shoot. Um, Well, I'm sorry, I can't remember that. It, it is just another thing that we're doing that kind of help uh, creeks out along here. And I, I can't remember what that was, but you know, you, you as committee members, anybody out there in the audience, um, you know, if you see things that need attention, if you could email creeks at srcity.org, that, that's uh, the best way to get attention to those matters. Thank you, Alistair, for your fine work. Um, are there any uh, questions of Alistair by committee members? Yes, I have. Um, Alistair, when when will the, the oh, I'm sorry. When, when will the the, um, the citizen volunteer cleanup stuff start? You know, that, that's not been determined yet. I, I, I'm hoping that this fall, maybe, you know, Creek Week uh, will be the third week in September. By then we can really announce and, um, you know, to and bring out the, the whole public. Uh, right now we just, groups that organize themselves, there's kind of the feeling that these people know each other, they're comfortable being around each other. And if they organize themselves, we can support them. But just to invite anybody in, 
is not what the city is looking at right now. Uh, everything's kind of as we transition out of this last year, it's 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 being worked out at levels, and we'll we'll get a heads up on that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, again, Alistair, thank you. We always appreciate Welcome. your hard work and involvement in our committee. Was there someone else who wanted to ask a question or should we move on? Okay, our first and uh, only item on the agenda is item 6.1, the Stony Point Flats Apartments. Um, prior to starting the presentation by staff, we, I'd like to um, ask if there are any disclosures um, uh, regarding any um, contact by any committee members with the general public or with the applicant. And also I know that Kevin would like to, to make a, a statement. Kevin, would you like to? Uh... Yes, thanks. Yeah, I, I need to recuse myself from this issue due to a prior professional relationship with the owner of the property. So I will step off at this point and join the audience on YouTube. Thanks. Thank you, Kevin. So are there any uh, disclosures of any kind of contact with applicant or uh, interested members of the public regarding the project? Yes, uh, I need to make a couple disclosures. Um, I do have, I have had professional relationships with two of the professional firms that are supporting this project, Civil Design Consultants and PJC. Um, none of those create any problems for me with this project. And I also, um, I'm part of a neighborhood group that's interacting with this neighborhood group. Um, and I haven't had any meetings with them. I've seen emails, but I don't have any direct uh, um, correspondence with them. And I don't feel that's a, an issue for me either. Well, thank you, Art. Anyone else? Carol. I just wanted to say I have had the opportunity to review, I think, all of the correspondence that's come in either directly from um, the public or via staff. Well, great, thank you, Carol. Yeah, we have received uh, several emails and uh, they have been passed along to us. Um, and um, I, I also have reviewed them, I'm sure all committee members have as we have received them during the last uh, week or so. Um, any other comments before we move to the uh, item by committee members? Um, so as far as the process today, what we're going to do, just for everyone's um, sake, is we're going to have the staff present the proposal and then ask the applicant if they would like to present as well. Um, following that, the committee members will ask questions of the uh, staff and applicant. Um, and then after that, we will open the public comment period on this item. Um, and then we will um, have a staff response to the public comments after that. Then we will have the community, committee discussion and um, statements by each of the committee members regarding their views of the project itself. So um, with that. Um, Eve, but before you start that, I just have one thing I'd like to bring up that before we talk to the planner has to do with the disclosure form. Um, and I think it's important to discuss that right now. Go ahead, Arthur. Um, I don't understand why the disclosure form is incomplete. Um, you know, the requirements are individuals need and general limited partners need to be identified. And, you know, nothing, there's no individuals identified at all for, for um, the applicant. And I'd like to understand that. Amy, would you like to comment here? I think I'll actually refer to Connor, if possible, on that disclosure form. Well, we might as well introduce Connor. Welcome, <laughs> Connor. Hey, how's it going? Um, my name is Connor McKay, uh, city planner, and I have not had the pleasure to present at the Waterways Advisory Committee yet, so I'd like to introduce myself. It is um, great to be here. Um, so regarding the disclosure form, that is a good question. So I believe that the applicant has submitted uh, multiple um, versions of their application and it might, it's entirely possible that the one that was included with this packet was not the one that includes um, all of the team members. Um, I'm checking on the previous versions right now, but um, 
in the meantime, Andrew, do you have any response? Sure. So I'm looking at the uh, disclosure form dated April 19, 2021. It does indicate that it provide the names of individuals, partnerships, corporations, LLCs, or trust who had an interest in the proposed land use action. Um, listed are Stony Point Flats LP, Phoenix Development Company, which is administrative general partner, IH Stony Point Flats Santa Rosa LLC, which is a managing general partner, and IH Stony Point Flats Santa Rosa LLC, which is a limited partner. Uh, based upon the information presented, I'm not quite certain uh, what uh, committee member uh, Deke is, is uh, asking for individuals to be listed. Are you suggesting that the LLCs should list all individuals as well? So, um, Andrew, my last name is pronounced Dikey. Just Sorry. so, and I've never seen one quite like this before, and that's why I'm bringing it up. It says, you know, partnerships identify all general and limited partners. Um, LLCs identify all members, managers, partners, officers, and directors. And so, I would expect to see individual um, people listed here. Um, and I, I have an LLC and that's the way it has to be for me when I file sure. paperwork. And so that's what I'm asking why this has got a lot of organizations on it, but no people. Great. Okay. Well, we'll have to check with the city attorney's office and establish what does need to be listed uh, for LLCs. But I appreciate your, uh, your comments and reflection on that. And um, if we do need to uh, revise and have this disclosure form updated, uh, following review by the city attorney's office will do so. Okay, and I just want to add, because I use this as the basis to determine if I have any any conflicts or anything like that, and I couldn't sure. actually completely do it. That's why it's provided, so I appreciate that comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that, uh, we will hear the presentation by uh, Connor McKay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Great. Um, yeah, so this is the Stony Point Flats project located at 2268 Stony Point Road. Um, and just to reiterate, the purpose of this meeting is for an, the opportunity for advisory comments from the Waterways Advisory Committee as to how the proposed project may meet the city's goals related to the city's Creek Master Plan, General Plan, and Zoning Code policies and standards. As a reminder, no final or formal action on this project is being taken at this meeting. So this project proposes to construct a new 50 unit affordable multifamily development on an undeveloped 2.9 acre parcel. The project includes the construction of bike storage, laundry facilities, tech center, fitness facilities, and playground facilities. Solar panels will be installed on top of the two main residential structures, which will allow the project to operate at net zero energy in accordance with Title 24. And uh, just to provide a little bit of background um, on the project, so the project application was submitted on um, April 22nd, 2021. We held the pre-application neighborhood meeting on May 3rd, 2021, and we held a concept design review um, at the design review board on June 3rd, 2021. The project is located at 2268 Stony Point Road in the southwest quadrant of the city of Santa Rosa. Um, it is north of uh, Roseland Creek. So here we have an updated site plan. Um, the site plan has actually been modified accounting for the comments made by the public and uh, the design review board throughout the um, review process of the project so far. Um, the updated site plan has removed the pool area and pool building. It's combined the two accessory buildings into one, which is located at the project's entrance right here with the two residential structures um, right here. Um, the approximate disturbed area is 2.03 acres. And like I said, the site acreage is two point, approximately 2.93. So that leaves 0.9 acres of undisturbed uh, site acreage. And this um, aerial rendering is actually the previous uh, site plan or uh, concept. So um, this is basically kind of just a conceptual um, look at how the 
project will look generally. Obviously, the pool area and one of those two accessory buildings uh, will not be uh, is are not being proposed at this time anymore, as I've mentioned. And we have um, conceptual elevations of the residential buildings, and these are also, um, I believe, the exact design and colors and such are still um, being developed. But this is a general rendering of what it might look like. Um, as far as the California Environmental Quality Act, um, the applicant is still con uh, uh, conducting the CEQA process. Um, they are preparing an initial study. Once this initial study has been um, received by the city and reviewed, the appropriate CEQA pathway would then be determined. And I believe the applicant team, uh, many, many, many members of the applicant team are in attendance. And um, I'm not sure if they have, they don't have a presentation, but I'm not sure if they would like to make um, comments that um, complement the, the presentation that I've just given, um, but I am available to answer any questions and I have my email and phone number on this, these slides. Are there any members of the applicant team that would like to make comments? I, I would suggest that the major interest of the committee, of course, is the interface of the project to the the creek, but uh, you're welcome to make any comments you'd like regarding the project. That would be fantastic. I, I thank you, Chair. I appreciate the members of the committee taking the time and, and giving us the consideration today on this project. My name is Phil Wood. Uh, I am the president of Integrity Housing. We are uh, co-developing Stony Point Flats with Phoenix Development. Uh, I'm joined today uh, with by Angie Ponce, Vice President of Integrity Housing, uh, our architect Keith Labus from KTGY, uh, Dennis Dalby from Civil Design Consultants, Justin Heacock from JJH Landscape Architects, and Lori Moneris and Christine Fukusawa from Dudek Environmental Consulting. We wanted to have as many of our, our design team members uh, present as possible in order to answer all questions in depth. Uh, we're pleased today to be able to bring Stony Point Flats before the, the committee. Uh, some very high level background and I'll, I'll try not to, to rehash too much of, of what Connor went through out of respect for everyone's time. Uh, but Stony Point Flats was awarded low income housing tax credits, which had been, it was a special allocation dedicated under the Federal Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2020 specifically to provide relief uh, in consideration for the, the loss of housing units due to the recent wildfires. Uh, Stony Point Flats is going to bring 50 new homes to Santa Rosa households that will be earning between 30 and 60% of the area median income. Uh, the project is proposed as 50 multifamily units on a 2.93 acre parcel. Uh, this creates a density of just over 17 units to the acre. Uh, the general plan land use for the property is split currently between medium and low density residential. With the overall site and the apportionment of each land use, it allows for a density of 49.74 units. So we're uh, a fraction of a unit over there uh, the project will apply for a, a density bonus in consideration of the affordability being offered, which with the density bonus language then allows for the unit count to round up, which will take us to 50 units. And so we're not asking for any additional residential units that would typically be uh, allowable under that density bonus application. Uh, the site does sit below, currently below the, the FEMA 100-year floodplain levels. We have a, a plan and a design that will raise the, the site uh, above this level in order to make it suitable for residential development. A uh, letter of map revision will be filed with FEMA in connection with that work. Uh, we do have, we've presented the project before the neighborhood, before the design review board in a, a conceptual design review. And we are sensitive to all of the comments that have come in and we are doing our best to incorporate as many of those comments into the project. And many of the comments that we have received have been very helpful to the design team to, to truly make this uh, 
not only the best project for the future residents that will call it home, but also for the neighborhood that it will be uh, developed in. Uh, so as Connor highlighted, we have combined both of the common area amenity buildings, A and B, uh, into one building. Uh, we, we removed the swimming pool. We do understand that, that the area has a precious resource with its water. We are sensitive to the ever developing drought conditions that we are seeing. So the pool has been removed and that allowed us to move the residential buildings further west towards Stony Point Road and allowed us to really open up the amount of area that we are leaving undisturbed. So at this point, we're now able to leave nearly a third of the site undisturbed. It will not, the levels will not be raised uh, above the, the floodplain. It will be left truly undisturbed. Uh, we've removed the perimeter fencing, trying to create more of an open feel and environment with the project. Uh, and then we are also revising our, our landscape plan to ensure that all of the landscape that, that we are planning is in connection with the project is truly part of the, the natural fauna uh, that is present in the creek in the area to date. Uh, we are tr we, our goal here is to create a project that enhances the beauty of the creek. We obviously have parcel lines. We are not developing over those parcel lines. We are not disturbing over those parcel lines. There will be no offsite improvements as part of the project to the creek. So the creek will not be impacted separately. Our project will be solely kept to within, within the parcel boundaries. And uh, we are excited for it. We are excited to have eyes on the creek here. And we think that this will be a, a great project to enhance the area. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Is that the uh, end of the uh, presentation by the applicants at this point? Yes, and we are happy to answer any, any questions or further explain any details of the project that might be helpful. Thank you, sir. Um, with that, are there um, questions of the committee for staff or the applicant? I um, see Carolyn. Yeah, Carol, would you like sorry. To go? Yeah, thank you. I was taking some notes um, during that presentation. Could I get a little clarification of what a third of the site, quote, undisturbed means? The, 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 I, I, I was following the whole project is moving forward with the elimination of the swimming pool in those buildings, which creates more open space at the back. Describe how the uh, undisturbed property plays out for me. So I Absolutely. can do that better. Connor, would it be possible to bring up slide number five in your presentation? Yeah, one sec. Thank you. Visuals will help tremendously here. So this is our revised site plan, and we would have loved to be further through the development of this, uh, but we are currently in the middle of our revisions right now. But the grade area will be the portion of the parcel that will be developed. The, the white phase, everything to the east there, you can see it's still in the, the rectangular box. That portion of land will be left as is. Um, we will not be turning dirt over in that area. There will be no part of the project that is developed on that area. It will sit as it sits today. But, but one would assume that there will be children. Um, is it gonna be open for kids to ride their bicycles on? Is it gonna be open space for this project just left fallow or is it, it going? It, it will be open. There will be no fencing around it. Currently we are looking at uh, the future North Point Parkway which will be moving through a portion of this parcel. It will be dedicated to the city for that future parkway expansion. Uh, we, we have not had the, the conversations yet with planning, but we would be, the development team would be open to uh, vacating that entire portion of the parcel. So, so I guess for all intents and purposes, what I saw when I was out there the day before yesterday is how it will look if and when this project is built? Uh, yes, with the exception of any, any buildings that are out there, I, I have not seen this 
overlaid yet on the, the current satellite image. There are uh, barns out there, uh, accessory buildings in connection with current pasturing activities. Uh, those would be, from a, a safety standpoint, those would be demolished and removed. Uh, but I believe this far out on the parcel is, is purely the pasture land, which would be left undisturbed. Any fencing around there would be, would be taken down and removed. So um, the project would take care of responsibility for say weed maintenance, but it would not be landscaped. It would not be paved over. It would be left in its natural condition. Correct, yes. And, and my second question, and here's where I need to apologize. As far as fencing of the development to the creek, I, I, could you review that part one more time? Sure, so initially uh, we had looked at, at having a perimeter fence around the entire site. Um, but one of the things that came out of our conceptual design review was um, the leaving the, the openness to that creek trail uh, and, and the aesthetic that the feeling that is created when you have a, a linear fence running that entire property line. It is a, a lengthy line, even within the, the grade development box that we're looking at right now. Uh, so we, we are removing the fence in order to create more of an open feel from the, the property into the creek. On that note, could you tell me what the long black bars are at the property line? Yes, and Dennis Dalby, would you like to uh, speak to that? I, I want to say those are bioretention. Yes, Phil, I can speak to that. This is uh, Dennis Dalby, civil design consultants, the project civil engineer. Um, that is the required uh, stormwater low impact development BMP features that will clean and, and capture stormwater per the city's LID manual. So there, so, so uh, Carol, to be more specific there, there, they are, they are infiltration basins um, that will be planted and um, and that's where the storm drain is directed. And they're, they're on both the, uh, the south and the north sides of the property. Perfect, could you tell me elevation for eyes on the creek purposes? Elevation, uh, at current, currently based on the, the current FEMA map, um, we are going to be at the, I'd say at the uh, east side, that most easterly building will be about a foot and a half above existing ground. And as we move to the west, as the, as the land falls, we'll be about three and a half above existing ground at that very front building. Uh, uh, for eyes on the creek purposes, will people be able to see over these structures? Uh, excuse my ignorance here. These are pretty much ground level with plantings. They're not they, they, they are there. They are sunken. The ones on the south side are sunk are six inches deep. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, Art. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, I've been out of town all week, and I didn't get this updated site plan. I, I mean, this is the very, very first time I've seen it, and so when I look back on my email, I, it looks like it was sent out on Tuesday. And so I never had an opportunity to look at it because what's what I'm not seeing here is, you know, the setback um, mapping, how that would have changed. Because uh, when I looked at the building that was in initially in the far left hand corner, the southwest corner, it looked like the it was actually encroaching on the setback. Um, and it looked like it might have just been the roof overhang. And now it looks like that building has been moved north. And so, and then I can see that the whole Eastern section of this has, looks like it's been removed and now we're, there's a whole open space. And I think that was mentioned. Um, and there are numerous other changes when I'm look, uh, looking at this that I, I, quite frankly, I haven't had time to, to look at the entire thing. So, um, that's that's my first comment. Um, it so I, I have I have a hard time um, analyzing the original setback um, that were included in the civil package 
and I had questions on that, but now I'm not quite sure because it seemed like I couldn't discern where the top of the bank was. And I saw some 15 foot setbacks to the property line. Um, it, it was really hard to understand. Um, so I, I wanna make note of that. Um, one note to the staff is, is uh, I've asked in the past that the, the, the overall watershed map be a little bit easier to understand so we can see exactly where the project is. And it's, it's just really difficult to see when it's on such a high scale. So that's just one comment to that. I don't quite understand the stormwater drainage and so how that works. So um, Dennis, I appreciate you identifying on this site map, but it looks like we have a lot of black areas. Some are in the central area and I'm not sure where it actually drains and outlets into the creek. And so if we have something that shows that, I'd appreciate it. Um, on, on that access, I guess the, the access and fencing is more of a comment for later, but it, it just seems to me that the access should have fencing um, just because there's a lot of homeless encampments along this. And so it, just, it seemed like that would, Seem like there should be access through gated areas, but uh, removing all the fencing, I don't know if that seems like a right thing to do in the overall, um, the way our community is. Um, and there were some other questions I had on the original site plan, which there's some blue annotations that I don't quite understand, but I don't see those on this one that's being shown. And I, I saw that, that um, our committee member Adam Sharon, who's on the DRB, he made comments because I was really hoping to see, since he's a landscape architect, we would hear what he had to say on this. But it, it seems like his comments were made of the DRB and it looks like there was, I just went through the minutes real quick and it looks like there were some things that were addressed on, on that. Um, I, I'd like the applicant to, to discuss what changes to landscaping and um, were were, um, were mentioned and what changes they made to their site plan. So those are my initial questions I have right now. Uh, thank you. And I think I I'd like to start with the um, top of bank um, setback question. I'm hoping that Dennis is able to speak to that. Hi, Connor. Yes, I can. Um, so we, we, as part of our um, entitlement process, we had our surveyor, Sinquini Passerino, go out and survey the creek itself. And you can see that in the graphic up on the screen. That is a ground topo that was prepared by the surveyor and they identified the top of bank. And you can, you can kind of make it out on this plan. You, um, the, the creek trail, which is a dashed line, you know, above the flow line of the creek, um, just behind that is where the top of bank was surveyed. So that, yes, yeah, right, yes. So, so that hand is going through the creek trail and just to the north of it, you see another little dashed line that's representing the top of bank of the creek. And then I believe we also had questions about the um, landscaping, if uh, any landscaping changes or just landscaping discussion in general. Well, uh, this is just, I'm sorry, this is Justin Heacock. I'm the landscape architect on the project. And, um, you know, from a design standpoint, we didn't change much about how we're going to interface with Roseland Creek on that side of the property. Um, the intent was to incorporate a native and native uh, compatible plant material, um, trees and shrubs and ground covers to naturalize that area and try to marry it to the adjacent Roseland Creek and uh, adjacent, um, which I believe is um, non-native grassland and kind of scrub material. Um, I had an opportunity while we were going through this process of doing the conceptual to review some of the Roseland Creek conceptual exhibits and looked at some of the you know, plant palette and community uh, plant material, um, and we're looking at incorporating some of that um, into the site to further integrate, you know, the, the on-site design with the off-site, you know, 
And that's that's the intent. All of those water quality basins along the uh, lower portion of the site uh, directly interfacing with uh, Roseland Creek is gonna be planted in a way uh, to create kind of a natural uh, swale that's gonna be uh, an opportunity uh, as well as a structurally, you know, uh, water treatment facility as well. So can I just follow up on this? You're saying this is the area above the creek, uh, in the creek setback itself? Yes, yes, between the buildings and the property line on, on that uh, side of the property. But between the property, okay, uh, but just north of the, uh, the creek itself, you're saying too, where the uh, property will be developed. That yes, morning. yes. Okay. Yeah, so the intent of the overall design is to uh, incorporate uh, mostly native and native compatible low water use plants to minimize the amount of water usage and runoff into the creek. And then, you know, uh, look at incorporating plantings that'll help um, visually and, and uh, you know, aesthetically kind of tie the, you know, the best parts of, of the surrounding uh, areas to to the project and yeah. vice versa. It's, it's very challenging trying to figure out the extent of the landscaping that is planned in that area um, mm -hmm. on the map, as you can imagine. Sure. Yeah, it, well, you know, we took into account the uh, locations of the existing trees on the site. And the idea was to try to, you know, reinforce uh, that uh, stand of, of trees along the, around, along the creek there. So tr tree species and locations will interface with the existing tree community. So it, it feels a little more natural, maybe not, it, it won't be straight all native, but you know, cause certain trees and shrubs will, you know, um, lend itself, uh, you know, to screening and those sorts of things. So, but the idea would be to have a, a nice comprehensive palette that supports both the native landscape and uh, the need for of the project and once we move into the comment section the um the committee can advise on specific landscape palettes of and stuff of that nature um i was also hoping that um dennis or phil can you clarify the actual location of the buildings um from the top of bank um, i know that might be that's that's obviously different from where the lid infrastructure is located so can we just get a little bit of clarity on where the buildings are actually located away from the top of bank Yes, Connor, this is Dennis again. Um, we are proposing a 30 foot setback from top of bank and the buildings are outside of that setback. Great, thank you. And Chair Rabinowitz, if I can make a, a quick clarification as well. Um, in, um, so in talking with Steve Brady, uh, this creek is considered channelized. So uh, that does meet the setback requirements. So there is a reduction in the setback once a creek is channelized and is under um, ownership and control of Sonoma water. Thank you. Connor, Connor, this is Dennis again. I'd also like to add that in the, um, the easterly section where North Point, future North Point Parkway is cutting through, you'll also see another dedication line. So what, what we are proposing also is to dedicate that South uh, East, or pardon me, yeah, the Southeast corner um, to the city of Santa Rosa or to the water agency for the um, future master plan improvements for Roseland Creek. Great. Thanks, Dennis. Charles. So, so the yeah. one, question, one question I didn't hear responded to is I, I still don't understand the stormwater drainage. Can I, I don't know where it outlets and where it inlets into the creek. Hey, Art. Um, so, so generally, the, the site is going to drain to both uh, the north and the south through the water quality basins. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the um, southwest corner of the project, there is an existing field drain yeah. that drains into the creek today. That's where our connection will be. Okay, so the, these swales on the southern side are going to are going to all move generally to the west and then hit that field drain and go into the creek. Yeah, that we will we, we will we will pipe to the field drain and then the field drain has an existing outfall into the creek. And then the the areas that are 
uh, in the parking lot that are black. Um, what are, are, are those integrated into this drainage? Yes, uh, on the, along the north property line, yes. No, no in the central part and where I can, down from that, just down slight, yeah, those things, what are those? Well, those, are, those are just sidewalks and, you know, hard oh. feet. Okay, so the only swales are these linear east-west on the north and south border, is that correct? That's correct, Art. Okay, and the north, uh, how does it, what happens with the north? How does it drain outlet? Same way, so, so it, everything generally drains to the west toward the entrance. Um, there will be a structure at the end there that takes a pipe over, you know, south to that existing field drain. Okay. Okay, thank you, Dennis. You bet. Charles? Yeah, I think this may be a procedural question, but my understanding is that um, these are very preliminary drawings and that we'll, we'll have another chance to review more specific uh, dimension site plans and, and grading plans with more information and a specific landscape plan. I mean, we're hearing a lot about them, but it would certainly be who the committee to be able to look at these drawings in some detail if, if they'll be forthcoming. Is that procedurally how we're gonna proceed here or is this our only look? I think your point is well taken, uh, Charles, and that is something the committee definitely should consider. <coughs> Amy, do you have any uh, comment on the process on the, uh, as this item moves through the uh, city's process? Yeah, typically um, your committee is seeing things early in the process so you can provide comments that may um, impact the design of the site and the structures. So at this point, if you do feel like it needs to come back, um, that is under your purview. So um, you can provide comments today and ask that it comes back at a later date, um, but that, that is up to your committee. Okay, and uh, if, if you could also speak to the uh, CEQA process here, how the uh, existing EIRs for the Roseland area specific plan might play into the CEQA analysis and what the status of the, the um, initial study for this is so that we may know when we get uh, definitive CEQA information on the project. Sure, yeah. oh, oh, go sorry. ahead, Connor. Oh, was, okay. Um, so the initial study is still in progress and I would not be feel comfortable speculating on how that future CEQA um, document, whatever results from that initial study, the analysis that's presented there. Um, I'm not sure how we will incorporate the Roseland area Sebastopol Road specific plan EIR. Um, until we receive that analysis, I, I don't feel comfortable making any comments about how that might go. I, I, Charles, are, did you have any follow-up or you did you feel your answer. Uh, I think at this point, I, my questions have been answered. Thank you. I wanted to just follow up for one second. Carol had asked about the fencing and could you explain what your intent there is in terms of the fencing with the height and materials? Or has that decision been reached or is that an open question at this point? Sure. So at this point, we have actually removed the fencing. So you know, height and materials have been pulled from, from the equation there to create more of a, an open natural environment as, as much as possible. So there is no fencing between the project and the creek? Correct. The original plan did intend to fence the entire perimeter of the, the project, uh, but based on a number of the comments that we received during our conceptual design review, uh, we've made the decision to eliminate the fencing. Okay. Um, are there other questions by committee members? Carol. Um, this is a question for staff. The uh, undisturbed area between the future North Point Parkway and this project, can you tell me what the master plan zoning for that is um, in comparison to the rest of the neighborhood and this new project? Um, when you refer to master plan zoning, do you just mean the general zoning district of this area of the property? Um, the, the parcel, what I'm going to call directly to the north, what is its future uh, destiny? I think she's referring to the general plan. Correct. Thank you. Um, let me take a look really quick. Um, 
So this is actually one parcel right here. And this has a zoning of R318, which is the same as the um, project site zoning. And as far as the general plan, um, this portion of the of the northern area of the site or the uh, adjacent to the site also has a medium density residential um, general plan land use designation as does the developed the, the area of this of the subject parcel that is proposed for development so um, but across this um, uh, extension area is the um, r16 and low density residential Okay. Thank you. Are there any more questions by committee members prior to opening up the public comment? I don't see any. I had a couple things, Steve, if I may. Oh, Mark, please. Yeah, every time I look at this map, my eyes are always drawn to the future North Point Parkway, which seems to be a big uh, impact in combination with, with this with this project, is that something that is for sure going to happen someday? I'm, I'm not sure if we can speak to this now, but it seems like it's definitely a reasonably foreseeable project that would interface in many ways with uh, with this project. Yeah, and for that, um, I'm hoping that I think Nancy Adams is in attendance. Are we able to elevate her to give her speaking permissions? Yes, Nancy, I've given you um, the permissions to be able to speak. You should be able to unmute yourself now. Oh, thanks. I wasn't expected to, to speak. Hi, I'm Nancy Adams, and I um, work in the Transportation and Public Works Department for the city. And I'm sorry, I've got it. I'm on another call um, as well. Um, so to your question, um, we, yes, I, I would uh, certainly expect North Point Parkway um, to be um, to, to, to be developed. Um, it's, it's part of the uh, city's uh, planning policy documents uh, related to circulation in that area. So um, yes, I would fully expect it to be built. Hopefully that answers your question. And just to follow up on that, um, the project has been required to dedicate um, right-of-way in anticipation of development of this parkway, but it has not been identified in the capital improvements program. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it definitely takes out a chunk of the undisturbed land that'll be left after this, uh, this project. Um, the other thing I just wanted to quickly mention is the fact that I was looking through the Roseland Creek restoration plan, and it does call for a 50 foot setback from top of banks. So I'm wondering if, I'm not sure if that is force of law or if that's just guidance, but it seems like a number that, that's out there for this particular parcel. Connor, would you like to... Uh... Handle this one or Steve Brady? Um, yes, Steve, are you able to respond to that one? Give me one second while I give him speaking permissions. Thank you. Steve, you should be able to unmute yourself now. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. So the part of the Rosen Creek uh, restoration plan does call for a 50 foot setback, but my, my recollection is, I don't have that right in front of me, but it is the area east of, Bur Bur of Burbank Avenue within the uh, Rosen Creek Community Park area. So within this section, I believe just the, the regular city setback, uh, Creek setbacks would apply. Alistair, uh, I've given you per speaking permissions as well. Um, yeah, I, I am looking at the uh, Roseland Creek concept plan that was developed in, or approved in 2002. And, and, and since that time, there's been discussion and changes in what's required, I believe in the Creek setback for a channelized uh, channel. So Steve uh, Brady, this does show up um, a 50 foot creek setback on a concept plan in this area but i don't believe that would be applicable today uh, given that it's a water agency's channelized creek mm -hmm. and and if i can i'll add to uh this is andrew triple supervising uh planner for current planning um i i would like to add to Stephen alistair's comments I do believe that the zoning code, which would codify then the Creek Master Plan, is updated to reflect that 
when a condition uh, presents where it's a fully channelized waterway and the channel is owned by or under the control of Sonoma County Water Agency, then structures can be closer to the top of the bank um, than that distance of 50 feet. So uh, when that condition exists, when Sonoma County Water Agency uh, reviews and approves or, or I guess approves a design in conjunction with the city's review, um, then that 50 foot setback is not required, which is what Amy had pointed out earlier uh, in response to questions as well. All right, thank you. Are there any more questions before we- Yeah, I have, two, I have two more questions. Okay, please. Um, is, is any of this parcel um, designated officially as a wetland? Connor? Um, I, I am not sure. Um, is- Dennis might know. Is Dennis maybe Christine from the CEQA team? Hi, this is Lori Menares um, with DUDEC. And yes, um, according to the Army Corps of Engineers, it is a three parameter wetland. Um, the applicants conducted a wetland delineation or had one conducted and it was verified by the Army Corps of Engineers in 2019. And um, Usually Army Corps delineation jurisdictional determinations are also recognized by the Water Board, Regional Water Quality Control Board, and uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife. Okay. So there are um, 0 0.063 acres, so less than a tenth of an acre of three parameter wetlands. Oh, where, where is that located? They're kind of scattered throughout, um, but largely on the south side of the property. So kind of, it's almost like they'll be largely converted into some of those LID features will serve a similar purpose um, of what the current functions are of the wetlands. Okay, and then my other question is, I just wanna to continue to understand, um, you know, the point that Charles made. So was a DRB a conceptual DRB and then is it going to go back to their DRB when there's more um, finalized plans, uh, Connor? Yeah, so the um, DRB provided concept review and typically this project would go to the zoning, administ uh, zoning administrator for final design review, but the director has elected to elevate the review of the project to uh, the design review board for final design review. Okay, so, so then potentially if there were so how would it work um i mean i understand we can request to see it again but if it's design if it goes back to design review or in the final compilation will it naturally come back to us um i think if we wanted to take it back to the waterways advisory committee we would want to do that prior to receiving final design review at the drb okay thank you anybody else Okay, um, we're now going to be taking public comments on item 6.1. And uh, Michelle, do you wanna make any comment here? Yes, thank you. Okay, if you um, wish to make a comment, please raise your hand um, for our call-in participants. Um, you will please dial um, star nine to raise your hand, and then you will press star six um, to unmute. And um, public comment today will be two minutes um, and there will be a timer up on the screen. And it looks like we do have some hands. Give me just one moment. Okay. Thank you. And we do ask that you uh, do um, have your comments um, to be a maximum of two minutes. Okay. Stephen, I have given you, you should have a prompt allowing you to unmute. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Let me get the timer up for you. In case my internet connection is bad, um, I'll put my comments in the chat. Okay, thank you. Can you see, can you verify that you see the timer? I do see the timer. 
Okay. Once it starts, it'll reset to two minutes. Go ahead. Okay. So I got the card in the mail talking about this project. Oh. And ever since then, I've been, you know, trying to inform myself um, about the impacts. This is just to let you guys know, this is the fifth subsidized housing complex within 1500 feet of my house. I have a lot of experience with these. I know how they change the community. And <clears throat> this one in particular, I was surprised that it is being built squarely inside a flood zone, the 100 year FEMA flood zone, not a portion of it, the entire project. And then on top of that, you're paving nearly the entire project. And then you're saying that you're gonna discharge all this new water into the creek, which is essentially serving as a flood control channel. On top of that, um, I think the city of Santa Rosa and all local agencies need to seriously consider this paving versus groundwater recharge issue because we are building things faster and we're allowing the groundwater to recharge. And, and this project is a perfect example of that. Um, the plans that I saw had the entire storm drain from this entire impervious area going towards a, an existing 24 inch CMP. I don't think that's adequate. Um, I'm assuming that they're gonna revise that design later, but you can't drain, I think Connor said 2.3 disturbed acres into a existing 24 inch CMP. Um, and then I'd also like to comment if I'm running out of time here, there's a lot of confusion about what the you know public comments and the North Point Parkway and undisturbed area, but I guess. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Um, we now have um, Nick. Nick, you should have a prompt allowing you to unmute yourself. Yeah, I have it. Um, okay, let me. Let me restart the timer before you begin. Just one moment. Well, I wanted to, before you start the timer, I just had a few questions first. And I was wondering if instead of the timer, I could have um, Mr. McKay throw up um, a couple of his slides, specifically um, slide four and five. Nick, if you could actually um, wrap your comments in, or I'm sorry, your questions in with your comments for the two minute period. Um, that way we are giving the same amount of time to all participants. I can't properly give my questions or comments without having these visual aids that I was requesting. That's all I was trying to do. Well, we just, um, so that you're aware, we do have Connor taking notes. So if you can just, during your questions, reference um, what slides you, the question is in regards to, right, um, he can pull them up when he, when he opens it. I'm going to begin your time now, thank you. Okay. All right, well, I would like to um, address a few things that was brought up first off by committee member um, Carter. Um, it seems that this needs to come before another meeting for the following reasons. First off, you have the um, setbacks that seem to be should be 50 feet given the floodplain location at the south end of the property that is currently being encroached upon by this uh, development. Um, it should be 50 feet in order to ensure that more of the water can permeate into the watershed underneath the, uh, the creek rather than into the creek where it flows away for those of us who are on uh, well water in the area because it fails to provide adequate recharge into this area. Furthermore, um, I believe that the EI, you, this, the committee needs to be able to review once the full EIR is completed so that this way they can adequately review the impacts that this um, development is going to have on the creek. Um, furthermore, you cannot discuss this, pro this project without also discussing the impacts of North Point Parkway on the creek since how will the drains from the future parkway drain into the city, or I'm sorry, into the river and impact the, the creek. And again, that's more additional hardscape that is end up going to be removed. So while there's this quote unquote one third area as shown in uh, slide five, that is going to be undisturbed. North Point Parkway is going to go there. 
and it's going to encroach into the river. Additionally, North Point Parkway is going to remove that eucalyptus tree and other trees along the bank, which is specifically portioned and a requirement of this committee to review and ensure that the destruction of the trees and vegetation are not destroyed and the habitat is uh, retained. Additionally, the tiger salamander potentially lives in this area and it's, and it's important that the um, EIR reflects and a study is done for those. Thank you for your time. Okay, next we have um, Ryan. Ryan, you should have a prompt allowing yourself to unmute. Yeah. Okay, let, uh, me re can... let me restart the timer for you so you have the full two minutes. Thank you. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Ryan Schwab. I, I live on Trombetta Street and I do wanna say I do appreciate the uh, design team trying trying to make this project work. But as everybody can see and hear, we're still trying to fit a, a square peg in a, in a round hole. And there are so many potential issues with this project that um, we're in fear of, especially during the drought. Um, I walk this trail alongside it very often. I see the amount of wildlife that is out there in both the creek and the parcel set to be developed. Um, this drought is seriously taking taking a toll on the environment. And this area of the creek uh, should remain undisturbed. Um, we'll be looking back, you know, in five, 10 years, and when there's no living organisms, uh, part of the creek or part of this parcel, um, we're going to be really saddened uh, very disappointed. And the other issue is uh, Stephen and Nick have touched on is all the water that would normally, you know, permeate into the into the ground and help recharge uh, the ground, the groundwater, which we all got the 20% voluntary notice to reduce water because there isn't enough water. Um, it's just going to be mixed with the pollutants from from this project and carried away by by the creek and what we need for people that are on well and other residents that do get their water uh, via groundwater uh, is not for everything to be paved over, making it complete hardscape. We really need to leave some semi-rural rural space um, undisturbed. We can't, we can't just continue paving over and building on everything. Thank you, Ryan. Um, if anyone else has any comments or questions, please um, raise your hand now. For our call-in participants, um, you can press star nine and that will raise your hand. And I am not seeing any other hands. Okay, um, unless there are others who are interested in speaking, we will be closing the uh, public um, portion um, of the item, uh, public participation portion. Any, is there anyone else to give you one more chance? I don't, I guess we don't see anyone, correct, Michelle? Um, it looks like we do have um, one more. Give me just one second. Nick, you should have a prompt to be able to unmute yourself. Yeah, I just wanted to add one little thing. Um, I won't be taking the full time. Um, is that while my understanding is that this can be a 30 foot setback, it is not required and is under the purview to recommend a 50 foot setback still under this condition. And I think given the floodplains and given the um, 
fact that the art that this is a this is a wetland pursuant to the army corps of engineers that a 50 foot setback would be required and permissible in this situation even though there is a potential for a 30 foot setback permitted um that's pretty much the the only additional thing i wanted to say thank you for the extra time Okay. Thank you. With that, I see no other hands. Um, and if you want to move forward. Yes, with that, I will move forward and we have ended our public participation portion of this meeting. Um, but I would like to then go back to Connor and um, have you respond to any uh, items you uh, feel uh, are needed to respond to by you at this point for the benefit of the committee. Yeah, thank you. Um, regarding the uh, development during the drought, um, I have a couple um, couple pieces of information on that. Um, I'm sure I'm sure all of us are aware, and obviously this is a water focused board. So um, I just wanted to identify that um, due to water supply planning and implement implementation of aggressive water use efficiency strategies. Santa Rosa's population has actually doubled since 1990, while our total water use has decreased by 14%. So I just, I feel like that's an important kind of piece to um, include in this discussion about drought and development and limited water resources. Um, Santa Rosa has a plan in place to address short-term effects of drought, which are incorporated into our long-term water supply planning efforts. Um, this development is required to be extremely, extremely water efficient uh, more water efficient than existing buildings and um, compliance with the city's water efficient landscape ordinance and various Cal Green building code standards would require this new development to be 20% more water efficient than what um, exists throughout our city. Um, and new development actually often exceeds this target. So, um, and then the setbacks, let's see. Um, so uh, according to our uh, Creekside development standards in the zoning code, um, where a fully channelized waterway exists and Roseland Creek is considered a channelized waterway and the channel is owned by Sonoma Water, structures may be closer than the top of bank um, than a distance of 2.5 times the depth of the bank plus 50 feet, provided that this encroachment into the setback area will not obstruct, obstruct or impair the channel's hydraulic functions, impede water agency access, impair the stability of the slope, or impair the stability of the creek bed fountain as determined by the, the Department of Planning, the Public Works Department, and the Sonoma County, Wa Sonoma County Water Agency. Um, so therefore, uh, a 30 or 50 foot setback would not be required. And um, as no proposal is to be located, no development is proposed to be um, located on the Sonoma County Water Agency's land, there's not any um, issues anticipated with this proposal. Um, trying to think of what else. Um, the reduction of um, the site plan uh, in, introduces a lot more uh, vacant undeveloped land that will allow for um, additional groundwater recharge. And I also wanna mention that the general plan and specific plan um, and the zoning code for that matter can identify areas that should be preserved for open space. They have, there's a specific designation in each of these plans that identifies areas that should be um, left undisturbed completely. And this site in particular has a zoning designation of R318, which allows for multifamily um, development, residential development by right. Um, and then the general plan and specific plan both identify this parcel as um, a site for medium density residential development. So um, in, in project design, um, we should definitely incorporate policies of the Creek Master Plan <coughs> and um, other Creek side standards, but um, the, like I mentioned, the, the zoning code and the general plan identify the site for development. So um, throughout the review process, we do our best to balance the policies of the creek um, standards and, and such with the, um, 
the designated uh, potential of this site for residential development. Um, I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Andrew, do you do you want to follow up and fill in any of the cracks that I've missed? Um, no, Connor. I think you've I think you've addressed everything sufficiently. We can always continue to respond to questions from the committee. So thank yeah. you. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, yes, why don't we go to the committee, see if there are any more questions um, of the staff, um, and then we would proceed to making the recommendations. Um, I have. Um, so is there any restriction on building in the 100 year flood zone? Connor or Andrew? Um, I mean, I think you just get insurance for it. I mean, we have a lot of things that are built in the 100 year flood zone. I mean, there's not, nothing that says you can't build in the 100 year flood zone, is there? No, uh, we do have chapter 18-52 of the city code does address uh, flood damage protection and uh, would regulate development in the flood zone. So, so what, what, what does it regulate? Well, it, uh, standards of construction, um, floodways, and such. So, yeah. in building and building division reviews, uh, the the um, flood damage protection. And this project is within the hundred-year flood zone. Uh, I believe so, but I would ask Dennis Dalby to confirm. Uh, it, I don't know uh, if Dennis is with us still to confirm that point. Okay. Um, but uh, uh, Steve Brady has commented he, that. He, he's here now. I okay, see him coming in. Yeah, I just saw him as well. Thank you. Hi, Andrew. Um, so flood zone, flood protection, generally what, what is required is that the finished floor of the habitable buildings are one foot above the designated flood elevations on the, on the firm maps. And that's been done with this project? Uh, yes, Our, um, there, there's a datum difference between the firm map and the city of Santa Rosa datum, but yes, we are, we are at least one foot above the established flood elevations. Okay, thanks, Dennis. So since you're on, Dennis, this question is going to come back to you. Um, on the on the bioswales, these are also these also provide infiltration, right? Correct. The, yeah, that's so, a, that's so a requirement. The, yeah. So w I forget what the impermeable area of the project is, but um, not all of that is going to get to the field drain. Correct. It's going to be infiltrated in these swells. Correct. Okay. That's correct. Um, that's that's actually correct. The the BMPs for the stormwater program are required to not only treat the stormwater runoff, um, but also capture a calculated amount of stormwater, um, and that is the you know that's part of the bio re bio retention BMP. So it's okay. it's a cleaning function and it's a capture function. Thank you. And then. My, my, my last question, um, I have comments, but my last question is this 50 foot, 30 foot issue has just really confused me. I mean, I'm looking at the, the staff report and it talks about a required 30 foot setback, but now I'm hearing um, potentially you don't even need a, a setback. Uh, I, I thought Andrew might have said um, or Connor said. So um, I kind of need clarification on this and um, to understand that, um, can someone comment on that? I'll, sure, I'll go ahead and comment. The, the project, um, both the, the current application before us and the concept uh, that's also been provided by the applicant um, has, has always maintained a minimum 30 foot setback from top of bank, which from one perspective could say is consistent with the code for, um, for that requirement, but then the code also does provide exceptions for uh, development adjacent to those channelized waterways. 
um, the the zoning code does not make exceptions for certain circumstances. So I think by way of comparison, when we think about the um, uh, scenic road corridors, you know, certain corridors have certain standards uh, that have to be achieved and regulate development as well as um, tree removal and such along those corridors. And if, if codification of the Creek Master Plan was to be sensitive to concepts proposed in the master plan, then it would have carved out exceptions or specific regulations for certain creek sections. Since it didn't do that, uh, then we would apply that exception um, to any development along any creek uh, if it meets those requirements. And then of course that is subject to approval by the um, Sonoma Water the, the property owner, as well as um, city, uh, Steve Brady's uh, department, and then city planning as well. So they could be within the 30 foot setback potentially, and they, but they're not. Correct. That's correct. Okay. That's, so they could. Um, and, and then the last question is, is this is for Michelle. The chat comments, those will be presented to the developer. Is that correct? Because the developer seems to be very amenable to, to hearing these things. Yes, um, I am saving the chat comments and they will be provided to the planner, to Connor, um, and then he can share them out. Thank you. Are there any more questions by committee members? Carol. So I've been looking at Google Earth this whole time, looking at the neighborhood, which is uh, a fascinating overview. And I'm wondering if staff can give me some perspective. An awful lot of development has happened in this area over say the last 20, 25 years. Um, entire neighborhoods were built 20 years ago. Also backing on the creek, it appears. And I'm wondering if the standards have changed at all, if it's um, a more lenient approach the city's taking, a more stringent approach. Um, how, how are the standards that projects in 2021 are being held to compare to neighborhoods um, also backing on this creek that were built, say, in the late 20 teens? I think the Trombetta um, neighborhood was built about 2000. Um, does that give you enough information to address staff what my concern or, or my need for education? Sure. No, that's great Th and, and a great question. Thank you. So I, I would say that the standards that we are reviewing this project under today are the most restrictive standards that have been in place. Um, and I'll, I'll invite Steve and Amy and Alistair to comment as well, because um, I am newer to the city. I've only, I've only been here five years. So certainly I believe there's uh, you know, some, some historic um, activity that could inform uh, these comments. But at this point in time, it looks like the um, the last amendment to the, the Creek side development standards was done in the 2004, 2005 timeframe. And, and so, and maybe the, maybe the, the Creek side development standards were um, only codified in the early 2000s. So uh, development happening prior to that was, was not um, subject to standards, but then with the, with the, uh, development of the Creek Master Plan, and then codification of the Creek Master Plan, then we do see the emergence of those more restrictive standards uh, to which development is subject. So um, please, uh, other city staff, please feel free to uh, chime in, because it is a very interesting question. I appreciate it. Yeah, I was just waiting to see if Steve or Alistair wanted to weigh in. Um, but, uh, but Andrew, I think your response was right on. I, I will say that um, overall, you are seeing a lot more development occurring 
um, within this area because of the specific plan and how it's designated as a priority development area. And so that is a decision that was made when the priority development area was established and the specific plan process proceeded. And, um, but there is a new opportunity to kind of uh, review and, and comment on the growth of the city and where that growth occurs. And that process is really the general plan process. Um, also Plan Bay Area is out um, for public review as well. And that is a regional planning document that does talk about the priority development areas in each community and the growth that um, is entertained within those and how that fits into the whole regional planning concept. So I, I think if there are folks on the line who um, want to review those uh, processes and documents, that's a really good place to um, comment on the amount of development that may be occurring in the area. Um, but Andrew's comments are correct was in terms of the actual creek uh, master plan and how that interplays and what that timeline is. I can just add one thing and I think An Andrew covered it well, but one thing is the original creek setbacks, I believe were actually in the late 1990s and then in 2004 is when they were uh, enhanced at that time. And one thing too, really with the creek master plan the Creek Master Plan is not where you go for Creek setbacks. We look at the, the zoning code. So the Creek Master Plan didn't change anything with that. So just always keep keep that in mind whenever there's a Creek thing. I mean, we look for the Creek Master Plan for you know areas of call for restoration and trails, but it's really not uh, the place for Creek setbacks at this time, the way it's set up. We look at the zoning code and in this case, it's complicated because you have the 50 feet, the 30 feet, and you have an exception. And I did during the meeting was able to review more parts of the Rosen Creek restoration plan. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, there is a distinction between the creek setbacks within the future Rosen Creek Community Park area. So there the plan actually did call for a 50 foot creek setback where the rest of the plan actually showed a drawing of the approximate location of where a 50 foot setback would be if those applied to a project, I think. Uh, that That's great, Steve. Thanks. And, and yeah, I did forget that in 2004, I believe there was a basically a republication of the, the um, zoning code. And so when I was looking at my reference materials, I think that's why it only went back to uh, 2004. But you know, Steve brings up a very interesting point, and uh, or, or point and chair. I think that that from your perspective, your past service to the city, you could also um, appreciate and, and inform any comment you might want to have about this. If we think about the general plan as embodying the community's vision for that long-term, you know, long-range development of the community, and then our specific plan still doing the same thing, reflecting vision. Uh, but getting more specific, then the policies that are contained in those plans are then codified through the zoning code. And so when we, when we review a project, we do have to look at how those certain policies are codified. So, so you know, density and allowable densities um, are, are in part established by the general plan, but then codified through uh, zoning districts. So when we look at this project and we see that the maximum allowable density for the project uh, site would be 49 units, and then we review it, the zoning code and we learn that the zoning district does permit this by right, then that starts to, starts to set the parameters for which the project is reviewed. And so to understand that kind of process from vision to policy to codification to project review, I think is very important, especially in the conversations uh, that we're having about uh, projects in the Roseland area. So I just wanted to, uh, to share that. Thank you, Andrew. Um, any other questions of uh, staff before we continue on with our statements? Okay, um, why don't we start with Art? Okay, thank you. Um, 
there's some big sheep on this property. <laughs> I was amazed to see that when I looked at the property, but, but um, that's just kind of a fun thing to say. Uh, I appreciate the I appreciate the staff with being able to respond and answer all of our questions. Um, I appreciate um, the developer and and his um, and their professionals um, to be open to making changes and working with the neighborhood and and with the city regulations and you know what our comments are going to be. And I appreciate the neighbors for, for, for being active and respectful and bringing up very good points. So I just want to say that. Um, I'm not sure that removing the fence is a good idea. Um, I, I, I just, it seems like there should be something that allows access and provides security and fencing. So I just want to point that out. Um, I'd sure like to see more about the landscaping. Um, I just don't have a good feel for how the, this project interacts with the creek through the landscaping. Um, like, like to understand that better. And I really need to see more about the wetlands. I, I wish we would have had a map. We'd see, see how that was discerned. Um, you know, if, if Army Corps and Fish and Wildlife are involved with that, or even the Water Board, um, I'd, I'd like to know it, it, what, they're, what they did with it and how this interacts, how the wetlands put, and, I, and this is a really, really small area. And wetlands definition is, is elusive, um, not always clear, um, but sure would like to have something to, to look at to understand it a little bit better. And we didn't have that. So um, because of those comments, I'd really like to see this come back to, to our committee for further evaluation. And that's all I have to say right now. Thank you, Art. Charles. Well, I think Arthur uh, summed up um, our reservations or my reservations anyway about the project. I think um, the explanations we've gotten today from staff and the applicant uh, make it sound like a good project. I certainly think uh, we could have done more to, to review the project in the context of the general plan and the, the Roseland specific plan to understand that those overarching policy documents guide what we do in these areas. Um, uh, even though our purview is how the project specifically interacts with the creek um, and, and possibly more context about the, um, the, the creek master plan and how it affects our review of the project. So as Arthur said, um, more specific landscape information would make it much easier to comment and provide direction on the project. Uh, dimension site plan so we understand where the buildings lie in relation to the top of the bank and uh, grading plans that show us how the water flows and moves onto and off of the site and into the creek if that's where it ends up and perhaps a, a brief statement on the general hy hydrology. I, I think everything we've heard tells us that it's being treated properly but we don't have any documents that show us that and because of that I would like to also see the project come back with as I said more specific landscape information, grading, and dimension site plan information. Thank you, Charles and Mark. You know, often when projects come into us, they've already gone through all the stormwater calculations, all the mapping. So since this is a conceptual thing, we don't have that information we often do. We have to assume it's gonna be done correctly. Um, I think I, I definitely want to second what Art said. Everybody's been doing a great job and I really appreciate their, their work on this, especially when it gets uh, uh, contentious in any way. But um, yeah, I think it should come back to the committee at some point when it's maybe better firmed up the, the details on, on stormwater because I share the same concerns about kind of a, a, a black box right now as far as what's actually gonna, gonna happen on the site. So that's pretty much all that I have to say at this point. Thank you, Mark. Carol. I'd also like to express uh, appreciation to both staff and to the presenters and the neighborhood. Um, I've been on this particular board for, I think a little over a year now. And um, I think projects like this are gonna become more prevalent, especially in this area and how we handle our review of 
this project as it relates to the waterway, this isn't going to be an isolated case. And I think how we weigh in what our concerns are moving forward, this is um, kind of a template for additional projects, specifically the project directly to the north of it. Um, if, if this one goes in, say, in the next two years, it's potential sister project may go in four years and that's more pavement and it also backs on the creek. Um, these projects don't work in isolation and I'm concerned that however we address this project um, needs to be a um, prelude for how we look at other projects. If, if a high density project or any project goes in of this magnitude that um, borders on a creek, we need to be consistent in our approach. So with that as a prelude, um, I don't have nearly enough information on this project to say anything other than, well, this is very interesting, um, but, but I, don't, I don't have what I need right now to say anything other than I'm all for high density housing. I don't happen to live in this neighborhood. I think how I would feel emotionally if I did live in this neighborhood would be far different from the objective um, stance I'm able to take. And I, uh, I wanna say that I appreciate people who live near a project of this magnitude relate to it differently than I do. That's it. Thank you, Carol. <clears throat> Um, I do want to thank um, the staff. Um, I want to thank the applicants um, for their openness and then particularly uh, I want to thank the uh, people representing the public who came and testified and uh, provided us with information and questions that uh, we hope we have at least begun to answer. Um, I think generally the project um, I generally support the idea of the project. There are some details, of course, that uh, many details that are left to be discussed, as my fellow members of the committee have pointed out. Um, landscaping, the whole interface between the creek and the project itself is very undefined, like I guess by intent, but it, it, it makes it challenging to be able to really get a handle on how the project will uh, relate to the creek itself, which is a a big question for us, um, particularly the landscaping and the fencing, which I think we need to consider a fence um, open uh, in terms of its appearance, but a fence nonetheless, because my understanding is there is on private parcels, um, not uh, it's not allowable to have direct access onto water agency parcels, at least that's my understanding. Um, so in that, uh, other than that, um, I think um, also, as other members have said, we really should uh, have this come back when it's more defined. And I think that process will uh, continue, but I look forward to having this come back for us to, to have um, more of a specific uh, way of evaluating the project. Any concluding comments by anybody else before we? Yeah, I do. Yeah, oh. thank you, Steve. Um, and this, this is, I, I kind of separate this mainly for staff. Um, in the future, if we have updates that come out um, to stuff like this, it for me, it just wasn't enough time. And I, I know the email said we have an updated site plan, but um, I, I need better notification because I made my site visit. I did everything based upon the stuff I had originally. And so I, I, and I just need more time. So that's the first thing. Um, I, I, I hope we see an updated disclosure form when this comes back. And, and then this 50-30 exception issue, um, it should have been addressed in the staff report. We should have had that information initially uh, to help us. And so this is just my feedback to the staff. Thank you. Any other concluding comments by committee members? Amy, is there anything uh, from your end that we need to consider or at this point? No, we'll, um, we'll work with Connor on to bring this back at the appropriate time. And um, just uh, committee member Dyke, I absolutely hear you and we'll definitely take note of that for the future meetings. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, um, well, we thank you all. And with that, we will now adjourn our meeting of the Waterways Advisory Committee. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all, everybody.